Okay, let's talk mattresses. Uh, being a member of a few different Ford Transit conversion communities out there on the internet where we all help each other with tips and tricks, one of the main questions I get asked a lot is what kind of mattresses did you use? And what we used was from Amazon, from American Mattress Company, uh, their six inch memory foam mat mattresses it says graphite infused memory foam that sleeps cooler and it does it sleeps very comfortably extremely comfortably and as you know out on the road a mattress is super important to comfort and because we have our beds and our benches as the same area they're great to sit on as well they're firm but they're comfortable and then we put a two inch memory foamer on the top um, and that really made a difference in softening everything up. But anyway, the uh, American Mattress Company um, mattress that we have here is, uh, it has a, a, a inch or two of the gray graphite on the top and the rest is a, a really nice memory foam. But it's a mattress that's not made with, what's it called, Jay? Fiberglass. Fiberglass. If you cut a mattress with fiberglass in it, you're going to get little shards of little tiny shards of glass in your carpet, all over your floor, your shoes, your pants. So if you ever cut a mattress, please make sure that it does not have a fiberglass for fire retardant in it. American Mattress Company does their fire retardant a different way and you can research their science. Um, but we were able to cut this and not have to worry about those shards of glass. And uh, the bread knife is the best thing to cut it with. Not an X-Acto knife and not a this or a that, but a bread knife slices it like bread. It's really almost miraculous, as easy as the bread knife cuts it. A lot of people think you have to use an electric bread knife, but you don't. Just remember death by a, a thousand cuts. Make your measurement, draw the line with the uh, Sharpie, and then just barely score the top of that mattress all the way down. <clears throat> and if you have someone that can help pull it open as you're slicing, you want to do death by a thousand cuts because that's what makes a nice clean cut edge. And you can find those uh, videos on the internet. Um, with us, we had enough going on then to try to actually videotape us cutting it, but it worked really, really well. So I was actually more intimidated by having to sew closed this knit fabric that came on the mattress after I cut the mattress in half. It was scary cutting the knit fabric down the middle. We cut about four to six inches out of the center of the mattress. They fit our bunks perfectly. Um, but then having to close up that fabric, I thought, gosh, am I going to have to take that to a seamstress and have her close that for me? Because I don't, I've never done that before. Um, but I did a lot of research, watched a lot of YouTube videos, and here's how I did it. Okay, so you know how I had to cut this uh, uh, cover, protective cover for the foam mattress in half to cut the mattress in half. So I went to Wally and I got this satin blanket binding stuff, tons and tons of feet of it. And it's just wide enough to fill in the gap between the bottom and the top, which is six inches. It comes around a little bit, but look at there, the Pammy's just whip stitching it on. How nice is that? Look at that. I've never done this before. I heard somebody talking about whip stitch and I was like, well, I can learn how to do that, right? And I must say, I did a damn good job. It doesn't fray, it doesn't pull. I put a safety pin in it and pulled on the edge as hard as I could and I couldn't get it to rip at all. And this is a rip stop fabric too. That's on the bottom here, you can see that. Let me back up a little bit, see this? This fabric doesn't rip. And then this one, Anyway, so in about uh, half an hour, it took me a while to do this end because I had to bunch it up. Um, and that's where I started and it's really bad and sew through that zipper and everything. But once I got going, from end to end, it took me about, well, to where I left off right there, it took me about a half an hour. So 
Uh, I'll have this one done, and then I bought uh, twin size mattress protectors to put over the whole thing when it's done. But this bottom half, then we'll just I'll flip the whole thing over, and then sew this one, which also doesn't fray, sew that to the other side. And as you can see, there's plenty of uh, stuff to meet together because this is really stretchy. Um, I can stretch it almost up to the, well, about a halfway to the middle. But anyway, it's going to work beautifully. Look at that, how nice that looks. I can't believe I did that. But I just went on Amazon or on YouTube and looked up how to whip stitch. You literally just put it in and pull it up. Pull it in, pull it up. Um, I should have this one done tonight. And then maybe start the other one tomorrow. I think this one was mine. Mine's like a half an inch narrower than Jay's. So I just pull out some more of that satin stuff and pin it up every couple feet and just sew it all down and then just keep going. So, and it's just going so well. This here is my thread with my needle. But anyway, that's that. <laughs> So having sewn all the curtains, which there's two sets of curtains, the awnings, the bedding, the pillowcases and everything, in hindsight, the three things I used the most in all my sewing projects were, of course, my sewing machine, my scissors, and this $5 cardboard craft board that I got at Walmart. This thing is amazing because I'm able to measure just um, yards of fabric and both directions so if you're going to be doing a lot of sewing for your van i highly recommend you get one of these craft boards because it really made my job a lot easier <music> there they are my two pillows finished so as you can see just from turning it you know wrong sides of fabric together and sew them together it makes a nice straight line this one was open just because the the sham folded in half and then this side I had to whip stitch <laughs> so I sewed it on the machine uh, let's see on this side. I sewed it to You can tell right about there, I guess But thank God I learned how to do a whip stitch because that Is what I had to do to close it So you can see the threads in there And it's not perfect. It's kind of a mess, but you know what? It's my mess <laughs> Okay, so there's several things in this photo that I want to point out. This was really early in our build. The edges of the uh, coverlets aren't even hemmed yet. But look at the blue wedges on the backs of the beds. Those are what transform your bed into a couch in the daytime. And I bought the wedges and their covers separately. I couldn't find them as a set. You can find, uh, I, got, I got the wedges at their foam, at Joann Fabrics. And the coverlets, I mean, the uh, wedge covers at on Amazon, which those come in a ton of different colors, and they fit like a hand in a glove. That lady, I gave her a great review on Amazon. Anyway, there's my pillows, which later I took some white fabric paint and put, put polka dots all around the one side of the pillows. There's our uh, lagoon tables. The tray tops came as bed trays with little leg stands on them. We unscrewed the legs and then mounted them to the lagoon mounts, which screw to the side of the bed, obviously. And those things twirl around in so many different directions, and they also raise up and down. So I can take mine, which is on the left, twirl it around and raise it, and that gives me more counter space to work while I'm on the kitchen end of the van. Um, the black, I mean, the uh, green curtains in the back, that 
design changed a little bit, which you'll see, or you probably might have seen in my tour. <clears throat> Uh, the coverlet was a king size quilt cover and I cut that down to two pieces that hung over and then I also boxed in the corners so that there's not a lot of fabric hanging off the corners and I'll show you a picture of that. <laughs> girls there's the sleeping bag and it's everything I hoped it would be I unzipped the foot so you could see and a little bit of the side and this is like a safe like a soft like a mix between a microfiber and a nylon where this is just pure nylon it came vacuum packed uh, one came today one's gonna come tomorrow it came vacuum packed into a tiny little wad for shipping um, there's the bag that it goes in, and I'm just going to let it lay out for the afternoon and get some air. But I was wondering how small, here's the armhole, <laughs> look at that, stick your arms out there. It's, I mean, this is detail. They even have a little tab that you can get from the inside to pull that shut. Um, but I was wondering how small you could pull this up around your face and look at this. Look at that. I mean, you can really snuggle down into this thing. It's 74 inches long from here down, and our benches are 72, I think. Yeah, 72. Um, I'm going to set it down for just a second. What I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and open up the, the um, hood part and unzip this. So you guys can see this cute little, okay, so there's that open. And then you can roll it forward for like a pillow or a neck roll. But here's here's the cute little, uh, uh, what would you call it, for your iPhone, the little pocket. It's hard to do this with one hand. Let's see how deep that is. So it's about as wide as my hand. And then deep up to my wrist. So you can see if I have uh, web my fingers out as far as they'll go. That's how wide it is. And then from my fingertips uh, up over my wrists. So that's perfect for an iPhone. I sure can't fit my iPad. But I can fit Kleenex or um, caramels or <laughs> paperback book, whatever. But look at these nice little tabs on the inside so that you can close this if you want to or open it. We're very, very, very happy with the quality. So I can't believe they're only charging $30 for this thing. Um, good to 20 below, I mean 20 above zero. And uh, you can also, it's like any sleeping bag, unzip this side and unzip the foot and open it up for like a full blanket if you don't want to be in a sleeping bag. Um, you can unzip the whole thing and spread it open like a blanket. But we're very, very, very happy with the quality of this whole thing. It's just a really nice quality. Really well sewn. Nice big zippers that are real easy to... Anyway, just wanted to show you the first one came in. And it needs to, it needs to air out. Because, uh, like I said, it was vacuum packed. And I think that's so cute, the little, the little uh, pocket up here. <laughs> so you can unzip these. Look how easy the zippers work. Unzip those and lay there and stick your arms out and, and have be all snuggled in. I want to just go somewhere just to snuggle on my bed and play on my iPad or something. So very, very, very happy with the quality made a good choice a very good choice and the bag was a bonus i can't believe it was only 30 bucks okay
okay let's take a break from projects and go jump in the van and we'll show you uh, why we chose a passenger van versus even the smallest Winnebago style RV um, we'll show you how it fits into parallel parking spots on Main Street how it fits into parking spots at the grocery store. Uh, Jay uses this van as his daily driver. Uh, he traded his truck in for it. So it had to be something that wasn't huge and cumbersome, like a, even the small Winnebago. So uh, let's, let's do it. 